The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship this day. Thank you for joining us, joining me as we worship together, and I certainly invite your participation from wherever you are gathered. Today is Communion Sunday, so if the memo did not come through, then I invite you to hit the pause button and to go and gather uh, the communion elements, uh, the bread, the juice or wine or whatever you have to substitute in those places and put them in the center of your gathered uh, worship space. And when that time comes in the worship service, we will commune together. Today is All Saints Day, the first Sunday of November. And for us here at First Presbyterian Church, we remember this day and we remember those who have died since last All Saints Day. So we will have a time in our worship where names will be called and a bell struck. Uh, the candles that you see in front of the communion table uh, represent the 26 names that will be read today. And they will be read by my wonderful colleague and our fantastic uh, pastor, Reverend Jim Watt. And I thank Jim very much for participating today as he has for all of the years that I have been here uh, serving with you. The flowers that you will see beside the pulpit were selected especially to honor and remember all who, all who have died, not only in our own First Presbyterian circle, but to honor and remember all of those who mean something to you, loved ones, friends, whomever. So we, um, we give thanks for so many, many wonderful lives this day. And as we journey on into November, it's that time of year again. Uh, the pledge season is upon us, a time when we are invited to make our financial com uh, commitments to the work of the church for next year. Uh, our resource development ministry team will be uh, introducing over the next two or three weeks members of our own congregation, uh, members of our session who will share their journeys of faith briefly and, uh, and why this congregation and the ministries and mission here mean so much to them. So I invite you to begin your prayerful consideration of donating, of making a financial commitment, a pledge commitment uh, to the work of the church in the new year. And now, let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Good morning. Our service music today was all chosen specifically for All Saints Day. The prelude is an elegy by American composer James Beery. Mr. Beery served for years at St. Joseph's Cathedral in Hartford, Connecticut, and then later St. Paul's Cathedral in St. Paul, Minnesota. He's currently at Gross Point Memorial Church, a large Presbyterian church just north of Detroit. This particular piece was written in memory of Roy Andrew Johnson, Jr., for 29 years professor of organ at the University of Arizona, Tucson and uh, in part in tribute to his Swedish heritage. At the end, you will hear a very familiar Swedish hymn at the conclusion of the piece. Our anthem today by our choral scholars is In Zion, which is a Tanzanian tune and text originally, uh, arranged in this case by John Bell, a uh, minister in the Church of Scotland and part of that Ionian community. We're very happy to welcome David Rice as our soloist with our choral scholars today. The postlude is Solemn Melody by Walford Davies, a British composer who uh, started his career with the BBC as a musical advisor and became known to many in Britain through his radio broadcasts. He later served the Temple Church and ultimately Aberystwyth University in Wales. Thank you.
I invite you to join me in our call to worship. As we gather here, we remember with thanksgiving all those who are dear to us. Our ancestors in faith have laid the foundation for this day. We remember with appreciation those who paved the way for us, teachers, leaders, grandmothers, grandfathers, parents, siblings, spouses, and friends. We remember with gratitude God's gifts of people, the gifts of many people that have made us who we are. We remember with love and honor the people who blessed us with their lives. God brings newness, so let us live with great hope. As we worship together, we look to the future, even as we remember the past. Let us pray. You, O oh sacred presence, are always and everywhere. We may be blown around by winds of change and uncertainty, but you keep faith as shown by the testimonies of the lives of the faithful who have gone before us. You are a steady companion on the way and we find rest and peace in you. Amen. Please pray with me our prayer of confession. Hope of all who have gone before us, you have called us to be your holy people, part of that great company that has lived and died in faith, but we have not always kept in faith. We have been silent when we should have proclaimed your love, and we have been idle when we should have been working for your peace and justice. Our lives have been shaped more by fear than by faith. Forgive us and renew within us your great hope that seeks to heal and bring to wholeness all things. Gracious God, hear our prayers. Amen. Thanks be to God for the spirit that lives in us. Praise be to God who is always working things together for good. We are loved. We are forgiven. God is beyond us. God is between us. God is within us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please turn to others around you and offer a gesture of peace. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Hi, welcome to our children's time together. Today is All Saints Day. And you may remember from years past, we would read names of those that have passed on from our living lives into the arms of Jesus this year. You might light a candle or ring a bell as each name is called. And this year we'll do the same. This year is a little bit different because on top of the losses that we've had, we have all other kinds of other things. 2020 has not been a great year for most of us. And so as we go along with our life, it's like this deck of cards. We're just going along in our, in our year of 2020 and we are just minding our own business and then boom. And then we just keep going on and then boom. And we just keep going on and on and on and then boom and boom and boom. And we are just tousled and turned. And so sometimes we're going this direction. Sometimes we're going this direction. Sometimes we're going both directions. We have our backs to each other and we're not making any gains together. And so I wanted to think about who is holding our deck of cards. When we are being tossed up in the air and we don't know which direction to go, and we're mourning the loss of our loved ones, God's hands are wrapped around us. In Revelation 7:17, 7, it says, For the Lamb is at the center of the throne, he will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Now, I don't know about you, but I've shed a few tears this year. 2020 has not been a great year. And we're mourning the loss of things and people. But we remember that God's hands are wrapped around us. And so those people that we have lost this year, God's hands and arms are wrapped around them. And so even though our lives this year have seemed to be in unrest, God's 
arms are always wrapped around us. So we do remember those people that we have lost this year and loved this year, but we remember that God's loving hands are around them and around us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for all the ups and downs and ins and outs that you have given us. And let us remember that your loving arms are continually wrapped around us. Let us remember those that are in your loving arms right now that have passed on this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament passage for today comes from the book of Joshua. And it is a story that talks about transition, the transition of leadership from Moses to Joshua. And I think on this day, this All Saints Day, when we name and remember those in our close circle who have died this last year, I think that points up a time of transition for us, a time of personal transition for those of us who have lost a loved one, a time of communal transition as we have had to say goodbye to some of our own uh, dear members. So with that in mind, let us hear this passage from the book of Joshua chapter 3 and then picking up the first seven verses in chapter 4. Early in the morning, Joshua rose and set out from Shittim with all the Israelites, and they came to the Jordan. They camped there before crossing over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place. Follow it, so that you may know the way you should go, for you have not passed this way before. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, a distance of about 2,000 cubits. Do not come any nearer to it. Then Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. To the priests, Joshua said, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on in front of the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went in front of the people. The Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses. You are the one who shall bear the Ark of the Covenant and command the priests. When you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Joshua then said to the Israelites, draw near and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, by this you shall know that among you is the living God, who without fail will drive out from before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is going to pass before you into the Jordan. So now select 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. When the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing from above shall be cut off. They shall stand in a single heap. When the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant were in front of the people. Now, the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. So when those who bore the Ark had come to the Jordan, 
And the feet of the priests bearing the ark were dipped in the edge of the water. The waters flowing from above stood still, rising up in a single heap far off at Adam, the city that is beside Zarathan, while those flowing toward the Sea of the Arabah, the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off. Then the people crossed over opposite Jericho. While all Israel was crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. When the, when the entire nation had finished crossing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, select 12 men from the people, one from each tribe, and command them, take 12 stones from here out of the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood, carry them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you camp tonight. Then Joshua summoned the 12 men from the Israelites, whom he had appointed, one from each tribe. Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan, and each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, one for each of the tribe of the Israelites, so that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off in front of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the Israelites a memorial forever. Forty years, the Israelites had wandered in the harsh wilderness at the fringes of the promised land, scouring the morning ground for manna, searching among the rocks for water, on the edges of a land said to be flowing with milk and honey. That was the promise, that one day this rootless remnant of the covenant would be given the land of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Leah and Rachel, those ancient forebears who had witnessed and sometimes wrestled with the unnameable one. Forty years. A long time the people had wandered, sometimes fretful, sometimes forgetful, in the wilderness between the promise given and the promise fulfilled. We have listened to the stories of the grumbling of the people, of Moses caught between angry constituents and the voice on the mountain. As far as the Israelites could see, the inscrutable promise giver was ever shrouded in cloud and smoke. Their wilderness wanderings were bounded on both ends by water. At their backs, between them and Egyptian bondage, was the Sea of Reeds. Before them lay the Jordan River. <clears throat> by this time in the story, Moses, the great shepherd, was gone. Joshua stood in his place. The hour had come to move forward. The hour was at hand to cross over into a new land. As the story goes, the priests took the Ark of the Covenant down to the banks of the Jordan. The Ark was the symbol that the Lord was with them. 
It contained the stone tablets on which were written the ten words, the testimony that Moses had received on the mountain. As the feet of the priests bearing the ark dipped in the waters of the river, the waters piled up and the people crossed over on dry ground. Twelve stones were taken from the middle of the river to be laid down in the, pla- in the place where the Israelites would camp. Those stones were to be a memorial. In time to come when the children would ask, what do these stones mean to you? The story would be told of the crossing of the Jordan when the people walked on dry ground. What do these stones mean to you? I have been thinking about stones lately. These stones piled up to make this church in which, prior to the onset of the current pandemic, we would be worshiping in freely today. I look at these walls, plastered smooth and finished from the inside and symmetrically measured from the outside. Yet, these stone walls, if uncared for, will develop leaks and cracks and eventually will become uninhabitable. I thought about the nearly 100-year-old stones of these walls and saw a metaphor, a metaphor of us. The people gathered in this community of faith to be the body of Christ, the Ark of the Covenant in this place. Time and nature have brought change and sometimes disrepair to our building, just as some of the great stones of our fellowship have left or been taken from us. We stand as every congregation stands at some time or another on the banks of the Jordan. We have been called by the generations before us to bear this ark, this church, and its ministries across a difficult river into the future where God will meet us. And the question is, will we wade into the water or not? In the months ahead, we will be making momentous changes in the infrastructure of our sound and video capabilities. And in the weeks ahead, we will be invited to make our pledges, our financial commitments to the work and worship of this church for next year. Will we go forward or will we turn back? The Israelites stood on that flooded riverbank with a wilderness behind them, and an unknown future ahead. All they had to go on was the testimony of the mysterious one who promised to never leave them or forsake them, but to live into that promise, they had to put their feet in the water. They had to step out in faith. That is always the way it is with God and with one another. We have no guarantees, but we have something even stronger. We have hope. 
This hope has come down to us through those who have preceded us. We do not stand alone, but in a great company of the faithful who have come before us. And today, our worship will lift up and remember those faithful servants who have gone before us. In them, we see our hope extending into God's future. That future is always precariously placed between dry ground and the flood that threatens to overwhelm. The wilderness is never far away. The shadow always strives against the light. And a river lies between despair and the promised land. Yet we are called to shoulder this Ark of the Covenant, which is our church and its ministry, and step out into the swirling waters knowing we are not alone, trusting we will come to higher ground. These stones that have been gathered in this place, the actual rocky ones, and the ones that are we, the people, will be a memorial to all those who come after us, a testimony to the gracious one who walks behind us, before us, and beside us into a future of great promise where all things are made whole and the peace of God, true shalom, becomes reality. Amen. The following persons have joined the church triumphant during the past 12 months. Judy Armstrong, Mary Beam, David Braille, Linda Bromond, Fran Curtis, Reverend Harry Eberts, Harry Ingman, Bill Evans, April Gallagher, Gordon Giffen, Connie Holvey, Helen Jacob, Donald A. Knowlton, Carmela Marcantonio, Jim Markling, Patricia Miller, Darlene O'Brien, Edna Oswald, John Philippi, Margaret Powell, William Schultz, Betty Shaw, Ken Starling, Gordon Tate, Evelyn Jane Swank, Vanessa Elizabeth Schwank, Ty Turning, in Zion, and Lord with you will abide in Zion. Our home. Heaven is our home, though untried. No more 
doubt, doubt, doubt no more we must decide where the Savior calling us. He wants us by his Still here, still here, there is work to be done. While still here, while still here, there is work to be done. The good news to share, the good news to share with each one. It is urgent that all know the great gift God's own soul. It is urgent that all know the great gift God's own soul. Songs are on their lips. Songs are on their lips in the heart. Unless strong, strong, praising his might. From each nation, all ages, praise the Lord, but us. We have now come to that time in our worship together in which a table is set before us. It is not the table of this church. It is not the table of this gathered group of faithful who are participating in worship today. It is God's table. It is the Lord's table. And it is set not only for us, but for all. So, no, you are invited. You are welcomed here, invited to lay down your burdens and pick up refreshment, refreshment for your souls, refreshment for the work that God has called all of us to do. And today especially, we remember the great cloud of witnesses with whom we also share this feast. So come. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. It is always right and good to praise you, God. You who created us and never stopped loving us. You whose great love for us is such that we can call ourselves the children of God. And indeed, that is what we are. We are God's children. And so we say, thanks be to you, O God. Gracious one, in the life of Jesus, we find you sharing and journeying with us 
showing us how to live as you would want through remembered Bible stories, prayer acts of justice and kindness, and through this holy meal, we seek to be more like Jesus each day. We want to always claim that we are followers of the way of Jesus. And so we say, thanks be to you, O God. With words and actions, Jesus taught that your ways are different from the ways of the world. We are called to love you, healing one, with our hearts and souls and minds and strength. And we are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. When we do these things, we are holy. We are saints. Thanks be to you, O God. We give thanks this day for the many people who have gone before us and who are with us even now, a great cloud of witnesses who in their lives tried to live God's love every day and with their lives have shown us how to be followers of Jesus. We are part of this communion of saints, and we say thanks be to you, O God. We remember that Jesus invited saints and sinners to dine with him and be his friend, friends, and Jesus invites us, saints and sinners, to this sacred meal in which we can taste and see experience and remember the goodness of our God. And as we come to this table, we join our voices with saints everywhere, praying together as we have been taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so we remember that on the night of his arrest, gathered in an upper room with friends, disciples, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in me, and poured out for you. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim God's saving grace until the end of time. At this time, I invite you in the places where you are worshiping alone or with gathered family and friends, to take your own communion elements, to pass the bread around, pass the cup around, and let us partake together. And as we do, let us remember, these gifts are the gifts of God 
to the whole people of God. And so we say, thanks be to God. The bread of hope and the cup of healing and wholeness. Let us pray. Gracious, wondrous, mysterious God, we thank you for this feast in which we have participated this day. We thank you for all those who have gone before us, especially we remember those we have named, those dear to us. Keep hope alive in us. We who will go from this place, this worship, carrying their memories, living into the best of their lives, we give you thanks this day, in Jesus' name, amen. We have come now to the close of this day's worship service. The close of our All Saints Day worship together. A time of remembering, a time not without sadness, but also a time full of thanksgiving. I pray that for those of you who have lost loved ones in the recent past, that the Spirit of God will continue to abide with you, recovering memories of times together, of teachings, of conversation, of examples, of faithful living. Let us remember those stones. And if we are asked, what do these stones mean to you, to me, to us? Let us respond with a story of our journey of faith, Respond with examples that have inspired us. Respond by naming the hope that promises to never leave us or forsake us. The hope towards which we all journey. Journeying not alone, Journey, journeying together. As you leave your place of worship this day, go knowing that you are embraced in the steadfast love of God forever, that you are redeemed in the grace of Jesus Christ now and always, that together we are being empowered for faithful witness and loving service by Holy Spirit, each and every day of our lives. And may God's hope, peace, joy, and love go with you always. Amen.